is this, expect Jesus to move. It says, get them in the groups, help us manage the miracle. And I just love this. For all you organized people in here, hundreds and fifties, getting it all super organized. But actually, a miracle needs to happen. We're all organized, but we need God to turn up and do something. And how, how does God impact a broken world? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen right now. Are you, are you all ready for this? What's going to happen? The worship team are going to come back out. They're going to walk back out. They're going to, going to come on stage. We just sang the song, A House of Miracles. And you know, it's actually easy to come to church and get into a rut and just take a seat Look at your watch. Imagine how long the service is going to take. And, and then just, you know what? Oh, I'm going to go to Costco, which is not God's will for your life, everyone. This, ever. And, and listen, I never expect a miracle. So what's going to happen is we're going to actually expect God to move. I'm going to tell you a story. And then we're going to sing that song again. House of miracles. And we're going to believe for your life, for miracles to happen today. For is, is that okay as a pastor to believe that God is real? That he can maybe do something today? Yes? Okay, that's good. So how did Jesus do it? Listen, this is what Jesus did. This became like Jesus' signature move. This is what he would do. He would take the bread and, and he, would, he would take it. This is really important. He, had, he, he actually took the bread. The bread that was given to him, he would take it. Look at me. Your life, you might think it's so small or it's a barley loaf. It's not worth much or whatever. It's not Whole Foods best. No, listen to me. If you give it to Jesus, he'll take it. That, isn't that precious, everyone? And he, he actually takes it so much that he'll thank God like his father for it. These people are believing me. These people are trusting me. Jesus actually gets excited by our faith. So he takes it, he gives thanks, and this is what he does. This is what he does. Some of you are in this room or watching online and you're thinking, you know what, I, I, I'm not ready to come to God. My life is such a mess and it's all in pieces and it's just, I, I need to get it together before I come to church. No, it's the opposite because this is what Jesus does. He, he takes our lives, he gives thanks for our lives and, and you know what he does? He then breaks our lives. <laughs> you see, before God can really use you, he needs to break you. How does Jesus feed the world? He takes us. He's so thankful for us. He breaks us. And you know what he does? He then, he shares us. All those break, broken bits of our lives, he takes them and he shares them across this world. So three weeks ago, I was preaching on a Saturday night here, go out the back and uh, a guy's waiting for me. And he said, ah, Pastor Andrew, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, absolutely. Here's, here's a picture of him here. And uh, he put out his hand. And this is what he said to me. Uh, the last time I heard you, or the last time I met you, he said, was in Folsom Prison. <laughs> Folsom Prison. His name is Lothar. He served 25 years, 25 years. And after five years in prison, he, he gave his life to Jesus, fully surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. And then he started praying. He really started praying. He said, God, I, I, I just, I need you to get more Christians in here. So he wrote to Hillsong Worship and said, you should come and do a concert in Folsom Prison. And they said, yes. And they did it, everyone. They turned up and they did a concert. And then he kept praying. For 10 years, he was praying that God would send a life-giving church into Folsom Prison. And little did he know God would work a miracle and Bayside Church would partner with God behind bars. And we've been in there for about two, three years right now, everybody. God is doing so much. And talk about God, talk about God multiplying your life. Lothar, as I say, surrendered his life to Jesus and he was given a promotion as a prisoner. He was given a promotion and he was put in charge of making the license plates. Do you realize that, everyone? That in Folsom Prison, they make the license plates for cars in California and Lothar, there's like a little bit of Lothar across all of our cars, everybody. God got him and multiplied him. Isn't that incredible? But he's been out of prison now for a year and this is what he said, Pastor Andrew, I'm now engaged 
And he says, I'm studying for a degree in Christian counseling and it's specializing in drug and alcohol addiction. Come on, everybody. That, that is God. That is God. You know what we're doing? I, I'm expecting God to move everybody. I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of predictable things. Listen to me. I'm just tired of money. I'm tired of house prices. Some of us, we are freaking out because houses are going too expensive. And some of us, that's all we do all day is redfin. It's just looking at the price of our home. Listen, I, I'm, t- I'm just... I'm just tired of the stuff of this world. Listen to me. I've come to this point where I want God to move everyone. 